I found it. Is this really where he was born? This is the place. 2,500 years ago. He became known throughout the world as Confucius. But he was born Kung Chu to a girl who was only 15 years old. She was called Chung Tsai. And, according to legend, shortly before she gave birth, a unicorn came to visit her. It carried in its mouth a small piece of jade. Your child shall be king, but he shall have no crown. What did the saying mean, Mother? It was foretelling the future. When Kung Chu was born, China was an unhappy and war-torn land. It was ruled by a king, but had many dukes and lords who were all trying to attack each other. Little is known of Confucius' father. Some say he was a noble warrior who did many brave things in battle. True or not, we know his father died when Confucius was very young. The young Kung Chu grew up respecting his elders and with his mother, keeping the family traditions. Let us pray to our ancestors, Kung Chu. Do you know why we do this? In the wisdom of the past lies the hope of the future. You are wise, my son, and are learning well. Lord Chung, come to take your city. And I'm the Duke's bravest warrior. Come to take your life. Ah. Oh. Ow. Oh. Play with us, country. There is too much killing and war in our land already. A few years later, he developed a passion for music. Forgive me. I just wanted to listen. I am without sight, my son. Step forward. Will you teach me to play? Raise your hands. They are large. You will find it hard. I didn't ask for it to be easy. I asked to learn. But after many months of struggle, Kung Chu began to master the instrument. You have learnt well, young master. I have learnt the music, my master, but not the mind of the one who composed it. I cannot see your face, Kung Chu. But I can see you are wise, well beyond your years. By the age of 19, Confucius was given an important position at the court of the ruling baron in his home state of Lu. But there was injustice everywhere, and the people were unhappy. Confucius would petition the baron on their behalf. I can't pay. Tell him if he doesn't, I'll double what he owes. My lord, he cannot pay what he does not have. Why not simply reduce his share? What? If my wise lord were to tax the people less, they would be more content. And if they were more content, they would produce more. And if they produced more, then my lord's share would be greater than the little he gets from them now. Would it not? <laughs> you are shrewd as well as wise, can't you? You should be a teacher. Not a keeper of records. Which, before long, is what he became. 
We must remember our ancestors and the ancient rituals handed down to us. If we forget those, we forget everything. Ah! Surely, Master, are not the rites of our ancestors just old-fashioned traditions? No. This is what is wrong in our land. The present comes from the past, and the two must always be in step. Forgive me, Master. I wish to learn, but I have no money. To learn, you must question. And to question, you must be here. Bring me what you can. But now sit and let us continue. And as the years passed, his fame spread. And many wished to learn of his ideas. But it remained a troubled land, where the sword, not justice, ruled, and the people suffered greatly. My lord, it's all I have! Silk, my lord, the finest silk. More! Bring me more! Duke Ting ruled the state now. He sought advice from Confucius. They ride in. They take what they want. How shall we protect ourselves from these greedy barons? The people must become strong, my lord. The people are weak. Sooner or later, our city will be taken from us. Then they must have a governor who is strong. If their ruler is just, the people will respect him. And if he wins their respect, their hearts will follow. No one will stand against them then. Not even the evil barons. And so Duke Ting put the wise teacher in charge of running the state, which grew from strength to strength. The evil barons had to make other plans. I say we burn their villages. I say we poison their rivers. No. We need to be cleverer than that. I have it. I have it too. We'll burn their villages. And poison their rivers. We must destroy the friendship between Duke Ting and this famous teacher. <laughs> Your wise teacher doesn't seem to approve, my lord. We have brought gifts for the Duke. Will you not celebrate with us? I would rather celebrate the trust of the people than the gifts of their enemies. You have insulted my guests. I feel no longer welcome in my own home. And if I am not welcome, I would rather wander until I find a place where I am. Master, I want to come with you. So do I. I do too. Then let us go forward together. Master! If it is the will of heaven that I teach justice to my people, what can even a hundred warriors do to me? And the teacher wondered wherever anyone would hear him, and he taught any who would listen. Thirteen long years, the master wandered and taught. And eventually, the master returned again to his home state of Lu. Duke Ting is dead, my master. Welcome home. And in 
returning, he hoped he could at last do some good. I demand to be heard! These taxes are too high! All you do is sit there and fill your bellies! But it was not to be. You are like the wind, and they are like the grass. If you would only become the breeze of good intention, they would surely bend to your example. Feeling that he could change nothing, and that his words always fell on deaf ears, the master withdrew to a life of reading poetry and teaching the ancient traditions and rights of his people. What lies beyond it? No, no, you are quite wrong. I am neither wise nor a sage. I am merely a man who struggles for virtue and who will never give up teaching it. What is virtue, Master? Virtue is hunger, my friend. A hunger for what is true and right and to love your fellow human beings. All our traditions and rights begin and end in this. Finally, age 73, his health failed him. But legend says that before he died, the unicorn of his birth was brought to him. It was in the forest. What does this mean, Master? The unicorn is a sign of peace. Its death is a sign that I have failed. Failed, Master? You have said so much to so many. But who has listened? There is still conflict in the land. Who has listened. Where are we now, Mother? The forest of Confucius. One tree was planted for each of his friends and followers. It's a very big forest. He had many friends. The unicorn was right. He was like a king without a crown. Did he fail in what he tried to do, Mother? All those years ago, and we still have his words. All these trees. And they are still growing. What do you think, my son? <laughs>